Um, so, can you remind me of your name? What was it again? Vikram, right? right? You have kind of the opposite issue of Vikram, I think, whereas he was kind of had a vice grip on his bow. You're kind of like droopy bow, the color dangly bow. So it almost looks like instead of holding your bow, it's like dangling at the end of your fingers. Um, this piece has kind of a huge piano part, right? And one of the things we have to deal with as string players is that we, we play a lot with piano, right? There's a whole lot of music for my piano. And a piano can destroy us whenever it wants to. Absolutely destroy us. Like, we just can't do it. So that means even when it's marked piano in our music, we kind of have to have a quality of sound that is really powerful. Right, that's going to get into the audience's ears, is how they feel. And the piano has like a lot of mass to it, so right? there's a lot of stuff going on. What we have is we have like sound that cuts, right? It can really drive through the uh, mass of the violin. So I think we can't get that unless we have more of a connection to the bow. And I actually, I want to try something that I saw another teacher do. Can you play? Um, Only with the middle two fingers and the bell. And it's not going to sound good. <laughs> the point is not to sound good. Uh, and actually, you can make your bow in the air. Make your bow hand in the air and just rake the bow. Yeah, so make sure you really have that thumb on this tip and everything like that. But, and then put it on the string. And then lift up. Oh, no, no, lift up the, the outside. And I want you to actually really feel that you're pinching the bow. And can you play? It doesn't have to be super loud or anything like that. But can you play? Cool. You know, it doesn't sound bad to be absolutely honest. And I know you can't control it, right? Kind of like flops around and stuff like that. There's a lot of a lot of the old famous teachers when you read they, uh, when you read what they write about bow hands. They said that the power comes from these middle two fingers. And I didn't really understand what that meant, honestly, until I saw another teacher uh, do this in a master class where, where she made the student play just a little bit or something like that. And you can feel that when you do your down bow, it's like you're, you're pulling, you do up bow, pushing it back and forth. You do one last time, same thing, just those two middle fingers. It, but to do this, you really have to make sure that that thumb on this tip, because that's the whole point, that you're feeling the pinch between those. Cool. Now, can you add your other fingers, but when you add the other fingers, you make sure you still have that feeling. Good. And what I hope you feel is that sometimes you do, if you jerk the bow too hard or something like that, Right, if the bow bounces or something like that. I think the reason uh, you can get away with that is because your bow hands is to do this a lot. And you're like just kind of holding it down there. When you have a real bow hand like this that's, that's more centered around the middle, you kind of have to be a little bit more careful with how much bow you use and how fast you move the bow. But I think the trade off is that you can get a bigger sound with it, right? Or something. We just do that, that same spot one more time. That is like perfect. Can I request the same thing, but now with like Yes, yeah, absolutely. And really think of cutting through the piano sound. Yeah, I'm going to try to be Uh, so th this, I think, is what takes it to the next level. Cool.